I'm Zach with Josh's Frogs, and today we're going to talk about MBD, also known as metabolic bone disease, or if you're feeling really fancy, nutritional secondary hyperthyroidism. Basically what it is, it is a lack of calcium, phosphorus, vitamin D in your reptile's diet that is leading to poor or abnormal bone growth or um, health issues. Um, basically, if you think about it, you know, you're a lizard, you're out in the wild, life is good. You're basking in the sun. As you're basking in the sun, you're absorbing that vitamin D from the sun's ultraviolet rays. Um, you're eating a wide variety of um, maybe some plant matter, maybe some bugs. Maybe you're a little bit bigger lizard and you ate, you know, a bird or a mouse or something. But you're getting vitamin D, calcium, and phosphorus in different ratios in different ways that aren't going to be reflected in captivity. Even if we feed the right live prey and stuff, um, those values are going to be different. So we need to take some steps to help address that in captivity. So there's yeah, we'll say there's basically two different ways of um, dealing with it, both environmental and then also nutritionally. And in the nutritional ways, there's two basic approaches. So environmentally, um, it's UV light. It's making sure we provide the right UV radiation for your critter. There's a variety of bulbs out there on the market. Um, everything pales to natural sunlight, but um, you know, if you have an animal that requires UV. So this may not necessarily be the case with something that's primarily nocturnal like a leopard gecko or a crested gecko. But um, UV, as long as they can get away from it, it definitely isn't going to hurt them. And I've definitely noticed in some of those animals, even when they're snoozing during the day, they're still exposed to UV and getting some of the beneficial rays. Um, make sure you're using the right um, quality of UV. Um, there's different strengths. So here's a quick example. We have these tropical UV bulbs, UVB 100. Some brands market them as a 5.0 bulb. Um, those would be for your animals that there's generally something in between them and the sun when they're active. So it could be like a leaf canopy from some trees Maybe it's an area that's shady a lot. Uh, maybe they're down on the ground, so there's some overarching grass or shrubs or something blocking some of that UV filtered. And then there is a desert, UVB 100, maybe a 10.0, um, with some brands like Arcadia, a 12.0. And that's more of a, a full bright sun. So these are a lot of times your high desert animals. It has to do with where they would occur. Um, you know, they get a lot of sun exposure. Um, and it's really important to, if that animal should be exposed to UVB, do your research, make sure it's exposed to UV. And also make sure you realize just because you bought it once, it's not enough. These bulbs should be replaced at least every six months. Um, and it varies on, um, on the brand. Some of the newer UV LEDs, the data is suggesting four years to two years, depending on the brand. Um, it varies a lot. Check with that and make sure you're dating that bulb and you're changing it out as you need to. Um, so we've got environmental done. So you've got UV exposure. Whenever you offer UV, you want to make sure the animal also can get away from it and also bask close to it so they can regulate that UV exposure by moving away or close. They actually have a, um, sometimes you hear it called the third eye, the pineal eye. It's just a little sensor at the top that can sense light in some of these wavelengths. So they can kind of self-regulate and see what they're going to do. Um, it's just important to provide them with it, but make sure they can get away from it if they need to, too. Um, secondary ways to address it are going to be nutritionally. So we can make sure that we can adjust the calcium, the phosphorus ratio in their diet, as well as introduce vitamin D3 into that diet. Um, do that. Probably the easiest way that we're most familiar with is going to be supplements your dusting powders, your cricket dust, your, um, you know, when you get those crickets from the pet store or from joshesfrogs.com if you're a cool cat, um, you know, you dust them with this stuff and you shake and bake it, you put them in a little container, you shake them, you don't bake them, you put them into that animal and as it's eating those insects or you sprinkle it on some of their diet, some of their food, they're actually ingesting that extra D3 and that calcium and phosphorus and utilizing it. Um, you know, calcium repashi, uh, repashi calcium plus and then um, RepCal. Those are two great brands we've used in a lot of our animal diets up here. Um, another way nutritionally would be um, to actually adjust their diet. Um, so you provide a source of calcium and phosphorus like these sepia or cuddle bones. We lovingly sell and package for you with this awesome, very happy to see you cartoon turtle on the front there. You can just introduce that into the animal's environment. Like um, I use this with my tortoises at home. Um, a lot of people will use this with hermit crabs or even with like invertebrates like isopods or millipedes. We'll actually graze on these things and get extra calcium and phosphorus in our diet. Or there's also prepared diets. So a lot of those pelleted foods out there are already going to be balanced for your specific animal. Um, and then complete diets like crested gecko diet. Um, here's Rapashi, Pangea, excuse me, any of those. Um, they're already going to have a lot of that in there. So now that we see it, let's say you're, you're doing this right and your animal's acting off. And you're like, is this MBD? Is this metabolic bone disease? Um, normally, if you see an animal that can have bent limbs or limbs that appear really flexible or swollen, misshapen, could have partial paralysis a lot of times in the back half of its body, its rear limbs, um, could have edema, could have swollen, um, you know, swollen limbs, swollen jaws. Um, the animal could also just be acting really lethargic. Those can all be signs of MBD. Um, 
It's especially notable if an animal is going through a, a part where it needs a lot of calcium. So if it's growing really rapidly, like bearded dragons, this is pretty common. Or if it's an adult female animal that's developing or laying eggs, that's a huge metabolic demand on the body. You want to make sure you're replacing, replacing that with a good quality diet, plenty of food, and a proper UV supplement. Um, if you think your animal has um, MBD, by absolutely uh, the best thing you can do is take it to a vet. Um, you're not going to diagnose this with any confidence at home. In fact, a lot of times you actually have to get an x-ray or a scan done on that animal to look at its bone density to get a um, proper diagnosis. And then the solution may be, you know, um, a, a prop, uh, kind of adjusting the husbandry practices, maybe making sure you're providing the right UV and food, um, a liquid supplement, or even sometimes a direct injection. Um, your, you know, medical professional will be able to help you out with that. If you're looking for an exotic vet, they're kind of hard to find, but the um, Association of Reptile and Amphibian Veterinarians, or ARAV.org, is a great online resource for that. Um, so that sums up my stump speech on NBD. If you're wanting to make sure you load up on the right supplements, foods, feeder bugs, or your um, UV for that, hop on over to Josh's Frogs. And for more information, feel free to check out our blogs or reach out to us directly. Thanks. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. We want you to have the most successful experience possible. So we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help. Just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.